Hold the door! I am just inside and I'm just heading out to the animals and I just wanted to show you this little girl here. This is Nyx and she came in about a week ago and uh, we haven't had a cat since Smokey and the decision was that we were going to have a, a cat. And of course Toby is very curious. What is that, Toby? Is that a cat? Is that a kitty cat? Where'd she go? Oh, she's in here. There she is, the black cat. <laughs> what are you doing? You don't want that ball. She's checking out my shoe. So now we have a cat. Hey, come here. <clears throat> Look. Whoa, what's that? Little kitty cat. All right, you go play with your ball. <laughs> All right, I gotta go outside and uh, I got a few things I have to do outside, so uh, we'll see you out there. Hey, Patches. Hi, girl. How you doing? Hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lambert. Oh, hi. Uh, can I help you? Uh, who are you? My name's John. Oh, well, hey, John. Uh, can I help you with anything? Winter's coming. Uh, winter, well, yeah, I guess uh, winter doesn't actually hit until December 21st, but yeah, up here in, uh, in Canada, it does get, uh, does get cold, and we do get snow before then. So I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess winter is on its way. What are you gonna do with those White Walkers? Oh, white walkers. Yeah, those are actually Pekin ducks. Uh, there's a, a couple geese in there as well. Uh, we're gonna be putting them inside in the, um, in the chicken area and the rabbit area. So they'll be closed in that area uh, and we'll fence them in uh, that section there uh, because they tend to wanna to get out in the winter time and you actually have to force them to, uh, to stay in the pen area. You don't want them to get over the wall. Hold the door. Hold the door. Hold the door. Hmm. Huh. Okay, well, I guess Tara can take care of uh, old John there. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. It is a, um, a cool morning. We hit uh, around zero degrees Celsius, so freezing point. And we had some snow this morning. Now, uh, it has, a lot of it has melted, which uh, I anticipated it would. And, you know, it's, uh, but it's inevitable. Winter is coming, as John says. Right, guys, Sarge? So what am I doing today? What are we working on today? Well, there's a few things. Uh, our water system, we have opened up, actually before I go any uh, further into that, we have opened up this area to the chickens. And they are quite enjoying it. So that last, uh, that last green feed of the year. Uh, so it's uh, not quite as lush as it looked. Chickens will... Uh, We'll definitely rummage it down. So they're enjoying it. Uh, you can see Hunter over there, the Muscovy, the young boy Muscovy. He is having a drink there and that water and this water over here are watering systems that we're gonna have to think about shutting down right away. So it's inevitable, it's going to freeze and then we'll haul water. Uh, we do have a heated uh, heat trace line inside the barn. So that's not an issue. We can walk, uh, you know, walk some water out to the ducks. Uh, Tara asked me about hooking up a heat trace line for out there, but really it's gonna be more work than it is, um, more work and energy and cost than it's, it's really worth. All right, let's go inside. You guys staying in here. Hey, Barry, 
Wow, everybody's in here. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the episode we did on sheep shearing. So I'll put that up top here in the uh, on a card and you guys can click on that if you haven't seen that. We're gonna have a few more classes. Here's the kids, Blackie and Snow. Okay, move your, uh, move your butt there, Barry. <laughs> okay, so coming inside, I thought Barry was gonna come in with me. <laughs> coming inside, we moved the incubator to this location here. So it fits in nicely. You know, there's always uh, rearranging different ideas on how to do things. Uh, I moved up the electrical switch or the electrical outlet up to here and it fits on this pedestal very nicely. So Tara was mentioning this morning, this is gonna be sitting here without any use. So how can we use this? So what she's thinking about doing is taking and growing in here. Uh, so growing seeds, uh, you know, lentils and uh, whatnot. Uh, I imagine to feed to these guys in the winter time so they have some fresh greens. So it has its own uh, heater, it has its own humidity, we can hook up water to it, uh, and, and lighting. So we do have some lighting. Of course I'd have to look into what kind of lighting uh, we would need. But uh, in the early stages of sprouts, they actually don't need any lights. So back here, we've still got our guineas. They're going to be in for the winter. They're growing nicely. And we have our two little ducklings here. Uh, oh, there, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where the pea chicks are, but look at how fluffy she is. I bet you they are underneath here. <laughs> Let's see. Come on, Mama. Mama Hen, what do you got? There they are. They are growing. Look at them, the little pea chicks. Now, upon, you know, first uh, examination when they were hatched, or shortly thereafter, we, um, we figure one of them's a male, one of them's a female, so we're not sure. So they're doing well. They're out of the cage. Uh, we had them in the cage. Somebody commented about why. Oh, protective mom. <laughs> uh, somebody had asked why is mama and the chick still in the cage we just want to take extra care you know they are um, they are rare birds around here they're peacock peacock peahens pea chicks and uh, we don't want to lose them so we left them in there for a little bit of an extended time but as you can see mama hen is definitely protecting her little ones uh, we have hay built up here, and we have it down in the barn, a bunch of it, but of course we like to stack it up here when it's uh, relatively warm. We're not going to need this pen right away, not for a while, until it gets really cold out. Uh, so there we go, we've got the door open. Uh, Tara's cleaned up this area here, so it's nice and ready for that long, cold winter. Uh, this pen will come up next. And of course, this is a storage area right now. So what will happen is we'll bring in Lucy and uh, probably the kids, kid goats. So the five of them will come in here. And this is where, they're, where they'll spend their time once the boys uh, get, into the, uh, get into the yard up front here. So that'll be mid-November, I think we're shooting for. Let's go outside, look at the sheep. No, you're not coming in, guys. You're staying outside. All right, so this is, yes, the enclosed area that is complete. So this is just temporary wood that we put up every fall, take down every spring, and it is a nice little shelter. What do you think, Barry? Oh, you're a silly boy. And the sheep, so they love it in here. This is a feeder here. Uh, now, when we did the shearing, we noticed that in the neck here, you do get, uh, you do get a lot of feed. So best to keep your feeder down lower. Uh, they tend to pull it out, the goats do anyway, pull it out and bring it down onto the ground. Then it gets trampled on and of course it, uh, they get picky and they don't want to eat it. Uh, so if your feeder is too high, you can actually get feed in the, the neck area there and it can make it a little bit of a pain to, uh, to, what are you doing patches? There's nothing in there. Curious. Uh, it makes it a little harder to clean. So when shearing them, what we're going to do this spring is we're going to actually brush them all out or wipe them all down as much as we can. Uh, we'll figure that out right before shearing so we have a real nice, clean, 
uh, coat to work with. Uh, thistle and what's the other weed? <laughs> they're both named after weeds. Thistle and the other weed, uh, they're going home with Barack, which is right here. And uh, it's been up to, it was, I think, January, February they were going to go, but their owners have found a home. So they will be leaving uh, probably in about a month, I think uh, the end of November, early December, I believe they are going. So it's nice and cozy in here. Wow, it sounds like it's now raining out. Yeah, so the snow has turned into rain and is going to wash off all the white stuff. Uh, so we are still looking for a home for uh, Petey and Piper. So here is Piper, and I believe Petey is actually in there. Uh, they have done very well. They've lost quite a bit of weight, uh, so they're here. But um, we're looking for homes for them because we are... We have been uh, asked about some other uh, pigs. And of course, uh, we need to make room for the newbies. And of course, Lucy. So Lucy will go in. She is just way too small. Uh, we did a measurement for Guinness World Record last summer, uh, and she made the cut. Unfortunately, we had some issues with the measuring and how it was done and how the vet performed her duties, and we couldn't submit it. So we'll have to revisit that. So she's 28, 28 centimeters tall, and the record is 30 centimeters for an adult goat. Uh, so all the ducks, yeah. So as John was mentioning, uh, you know, he was asking what we're going to do with the ducks. So they're going to go right in here. This is their little duck door. And we're going to close that off. There's a board somewhere around. I think it's on top there. Uh, it just kind of goes in like a guillotine and closes that off. So they will be in here. Of course, the Muscovies are going to be inside. Hey, guys. You guys want to go in already? So the Muscovies will be inside because they can't handle really anything below, oh, minus five, minus eight. Uh, we try to get them in when it gets, uh, where are you going? <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll have them in this area here. Uh, what I'm doing today is I'm going to wire up. You can see how I've got this all disconnected here. Uh, what I had done is when we had moved the chicken coop in the last uh, month, uh, this wiring here went up and was attached to the building. So I had run the wire through and it came through into this building. The building's no longer there, so I've picked up some uh, conduit to run the wire through. So I'm gonna wire that up to this here, and then from there it's gonna go to the end of the building. I'm gonna put the plug that's there on the end of the building so we have power out that way, and then bring the conduit across the top of that fence and into the building here. And you can see this conduit here carries uh, the wire right across. Now this system, I have mentioned it in the past, but I'm going to bring it up again because I know there's a lot of newbies out there that have just joined us. This is just a regular baseboard thermostat. Uh, so what I've had to do is I had to pull the cover off of it and there's a little screw in there that you can adjust so that this temperature, right now it goes down to like 10 degrees Celsius, uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So, of course, we don't want it that warm in here, so I have to calibrate it. So where it's set right now, I'll have to go over it again, but should be around zero degrees. So what that means is the power comes in to this unit here, and then what happens is, oh, sorry, it comes in from that unit here, I'll walk through it, uh, right here. So this plugs into the live line uh, and goes back to the box in and then there's two wires that come out and one goes to each side to these uh, extension cord plugs here. So they go to those and there's another one over here on this side here. So then what happens is we have a heat lamp that's right here and we have um, our water dish sits down directly below it. We'll actually lower this down but the water dish will be right there so once the temperature gets cool it'll turn on it'll heat this area but primarily hitting that water uh, to make sure that it remains uh, it remains uh, liquid and remains water now one thing you have to watch with these peak and ducks if you've ever watched peak and ducks they love the water so peak and ducks are a little bit different story uh, we will bring out water 
put it on here uh, in the morning and in the evening because they just generally like to play. So there's a couple different options there. Uh, if you have ducks, best to put it here. If you have other animals like chickens or something and you uh, want to heat them and you don't have a barn that is insulated, you can do this here with the heat lamp. Now there is some plexiglass on the sides here. Uh, there's a little gap here that's missing. We'll probably close that in. And this is all open on this side. So we'll put that plexiglass back in. And this is facing south. So the sun comes in, warms it up. Uh, and this building is insulated. And that is how you can handle uh, taking care of birds in below freezing temperatures. So if you're just getting started out, this is a great idea. And that's how we started out. And we're just learning as we move along and uh, figure things out until we built this uh, building back here, which is actually not heated by us. It's heated strictly by the animals and their body heat. Uh, we simply vent it. You need to make sure you have good ventilation over the winter uh, because with all that body heat, with all that breathing, with all that drinking, all that water that goes into the system needs to come out of the system. Uh, so therefore, there is an exhaust fan right over there that uh, blows out the humid air. So I'd like to give a shout out to McCray School. They came out on Friday. Uh, I was actually in the house uh, doing some adult homework. I had paperwork I needed to do before I uh, headed off to a couple inspections in the afternoon on Friday. Uh, so it was interesting, Tara had uh, mentioned that a lot of the students watch the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, that feels good. So it sounds like they watched, some of the classes had actually watched it in their classroom. And when the kids came in, uh, Tara was amazed that the kids knew a lot of the names of the animals. Uh, and she was, you know, she was taken for a minute. Well, how do you guys know? Have you guys been here before? Oh, no, we watch Mark on YouTube and uh, we know all the animals' names. And then they started asking about this and that. And uh, when are the donkeys coming? Uh, well, the donkeys, we haven't heard anything back yet. Uh, you know, we, uh, we contacted them and they're gonna line up a trailer. We've since figured out that we, we do have a trailer we can use. Uh, so now it's kind of up into her hands. Maybe she's not moving this year. Maybe she's staying another year, not sure. But anyway, uh, it's out there and we've offered. So she wants them to come here if she does move. She doesn't want them to go anywhere else or sell them. So um, we'll wait. Uh, that's about it for now. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, it was kind of a rocky start with John there, which was a little confusing, but, uh, you know, sure, why not? Everybody needs to, uh, to check out the animals and, uh, and, and have a good time, right? Uh, anyway, that is all for now. Until next week, we will see you then. Have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye.